Are you fighting the good fight of faith, but you still keep failing God? And all you feel is the regret and condemnation and guilt, and you feel like you can't continue to go forward? Well, listen to this. This video, I know in the name of Jesus, is going to encourage your life. I've been saved since I was three and a half years old. I've been saved for more than 30 years. I gave my life to the Lord when I was three and a half. I've been preaching for more than 17 years. And in my life, in my life, I have felt like that. I have felt like, man, I'm fighting the good fight of faith, but I'm still failing God. And many times it felt like if I was never going to be able to overcome Many times it felt like I was never going to be able to be set free or, or have victory over whatever it was that I was going through. It felt like that many times. And the devil doesn't waste any opportunity to jump on the train of condemnation and guilt. And he doesn't waste any opportunity. He takes every advantage to try to bring condemnation in your life and try to make you stop from following the Lord. But I want to read you something. I made a list of some people here. And these people were people that God called, but all these people failed God in an area. But I want to tell you, there's going to be a blessed assurance at the end of this list. At the end of this list of all these people, I want to let you know that you have a greater, a greater hope than all these people. Let me tell you the people. Adam's the first one. Adam was a man created from the ground. He was a creation of God. God gave him a garden. God gave him authority. God gave him dominion. Remember in the book of Genesis, God said, let us create man in our image. And he created them in his image, man and female. He created them in the image of God. But Adam felt the Lord. First, he was given his wife. He was supposed to be a watchman, a protector. He wasn't with her when the serpent was deceiving her. Instead of him speaking to his wife, the serpent spoke to his wife. The serpent deceived his wife. And then not only that, Instead of Adam, after his wife bit of the fruit, because have you ever noticed that when she bit of the fruit, her eyes weren't open? Did you ever notice that their eyes weren't open until both of them bit of the fruit? Because when both of them bit of the fruit, then that's when it was fully complete because they were one. Male and female, when they get married, they become one in the image, in the eyes of God, they become one. So her eyes weren't open yet. Their eyes were open when he bit, and because they're one, it was finished, and both of their eyes were open. First, he didn't take care of his wife. Instead of speaking into her ears, he let the serpent speak into her, her ears. He neglected his wife. But then not only that, when he came and saw that his wife had bit of the fruit, instead of telling her, hey, what have you done? We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to obey the Lord. Who knows? Maybe God would have even had mercy on Eve if he would have done that. He didn't do that. He went along with her. And he also bit of the fruit. And then what happened? God kicked him out of the garden. Now, Adam was a creation of God, but he felt the Lord. The second person that I want to speak to you about is Noah. Noah, he built an ark to save him and his family. Pay attention. He built an ark to save him and his family. How many people were saved in the, Noah's, in the ark of Noah? Eight people were saved. But what happened after the ark? He planted a garden. The Bible says he got drunk off of the grapes. But that's not even the worst thing that I'm speaking about yet. He got drunk off of the grapes. But then he fell asleep naked. And the Bible says that one of his sons came in and saw him and went out to go tell his brothers kind of in a mocking way. The whole point of Noah building that ark was to save him and his family. But after Noah got drunk, fell asleep naked, he found out his one of his sons was mocking him. You know what he did? He cursed that son. But he didn't just curse that son. He actually cursed his son's son. He cursed his grandson. So God told Noah to build that ark to save him and his sons and his family. Noah became so angry, so upset, and whether you might think that was right or not, that's not the point. This is the point. The point is that the whole point of the ark was to save him and his family, but he got drunk, became upset when he found out that they were mocking him, that he brought a curse over his own son and his own grandson and all the generation of his grandsons after that. The whole point of the ark was to save his family. He ended up cursing his family. Listen to this, the third person, Abraham. Abraham's the father of faith. He trusted God. He moved out of his hometown. He went to the land of Canaan, a desert place. But what happened? He became tired of waiting. 
he listened to the voice of his wife, Sarah. Again, instead of standing firm in the things of God, he listened to the voice of his wife. His wife was an evil person, by the way. She was a good person. But doubt attacked her just like doubt attacks anyone else. And the Bible says that he, he entered a relationship with Hagar, one of the servants, and he had a son named Ishmael. He became impatient, didn't wait for the promise. Are you feeling impatient? Did you mess up? Have you been living a life like Adam? Have you been living a life like Noah? Have you been living a life like Abraham? Keep going. I'm not done yet. Look what it says. Moses. Moses was a man that God called. He was a man that was very humble. But one day God told him to speak to the rock because the first time he told him hit the rock. But the second time he told him to speak to the rock so that the rock can give him water. But he was so frustrated because of the people that he hit the rock. And God said, hey, Moses, why did you hit the rock when I told you to talk to the rock? He says, you didn't keep me as holy in front of the people. He says, because of that, you're not going to enter the promised land. So Moses was a man called by God. He was fighting the good fight, but he was still failing God. And because of his failure, he didn't enter the promised land. But remember, there's a blessed hope. There's a blessed assurance. You have a greater blessing than all these people. Keep listening to this. I want to speak to you about Samson. Samson was a man who had physical strength, but he could not control himself. He could not control his eyes. He was fighting the good fight. He was fighting the Philistines, but he could not defeat the battle of his eyes. He could not defeat the battle of self-control. He couldn't control himself. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control. And Paul told Timothy, God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but he's giving you a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Some translations say of self-control. Through the Holy Spirit, you can control your thoughts. Through the Holy Spirit, you can control the passions of the flesh. But Samson was a physical man who was physically strong, but he couldn't defeat the battles of the flesh. Let's keep going. Samuel. Samuel was a great prophet. Samuel was a great prophet of God. As a matter of fact, he was also a judge. Samuel grew up in the house with the, with the priest Eli, and he saw what Eli's sons had done, and he saw how God had rejected Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas. But it's strange. Samuel didn't learn. Samuel also had sons. And when it was time for Samuel to retire or to go with the Lord, he left his sons in charge. But do you know what the people said? We don't want your sons because they're not men of God. They don't follow the Lord like you do, Samuel. The Bible says that Samuel would go for several months, you know, visiting all the, the tribes and visiting all the cities of the nation of Israel, you know, because he was a judge. He was a prophet. So he would have to go and preach or evangelize or even judge. And you know what he would do? He would leave his family behind for months at a time. So he grew up seeing what happened in Eli's house. But the same thing he grew up seeing happening in another person's house is the same thing that happened in his house. His sons were not men of God and they were rejected and they were not used to be priests and they were not used to be prophets. Let's keep going. Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. He was chosen by God. The Bible says he was tall. He was strong. He was obedient. God was blessing him. But do you know what happened? He was fighting the fight, but he was failing God. He became prideful. He became arrogant. He started disobeying the Lord, and God rejected him. I want to read you about another person, David. David was also a man after God's own heart. He was a man that actually fought the giants. He was fighting the fight every single day. He was defeating giants, but he couldn't defeat the flesh. He won the battle against the giant, but he lost the battle against the spirit of lust. And when you read the life of David, you see all the things that he suffered, what happened in his family, the destruction, the death between him, between his sons, even between his own nephews. I mean, things were just going horribly wrong. People were getting destroyed. People were being rejected. Lives were being ended. Why? Because of David's sin. He was a man that was fighting the fight, but he was failing God. I want to read you about somebody else, Solomon, the son of David. Solomon was a wise man, the wisest man of all. Of all, he built the temple of God. God didn't even let David build the temple. Solomon built the temple. But what happened? He was wise. He had a privilege that not a lot of people had building a temple. But he listened to the voice of the foreign women. And the Bible says that he was married to so many foreign women, they turned his heart towards other gods. He was fighting the fight, building the temple, but he was failing God. John the Baptist. Let's jump forward to the New Testament. John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, he's actually six months older than Jesus. He's the son of Elizabeth. He's the son of Zechariah the priest. 
John the Baptist is a great man of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus said he was the greatest man of the Old Testament. He was greater than David, greater than Moses, because he had a privilege and he had an honor greater than all those men because he's the one that came before Jesus. He was preparing the way for Jesus, the Son of God. But John the Baptist, one day, when he was in a dungeon, he began to doubt in Jesus' identity. And he sent some of his own disciples to ask him, are you the one that we're waiting for? Or should we wait for another? In his times of fear, and his times of doubt, he was fighting the good fight. Great man of God. But he failed God in that area of doubting Jesus. Now, the good thing is that his faith was strengthened by Jesus himself. The faith of John the Baptist was strengthened. But in the fight, he failed a little bit. In the fight, he doubted. In the fight, he was even ready to renounce that declaration. Remember he said, behold the Lamb of God who comes to take the sins of the earth. He had already made that declaration. But in his times of fear, he was saying, man, are you even the one? Are you even the one? He was failing in his faith. He was losing in his faith. But let's not stop. Remember, I'm saying you have a blessed hope. You have a blessed assurance. You have a greater opportunity than all these men. I want to read you about one more person. Peter. Peter was an ear chopper. Peter to fight physically, he was ready to fight physically. But when Jesus told him, Peter, put that down, because those who live by the sword die by the sword. When Peter couldn't chop ears off anymore, when Peter couldn't physically fight anymore, his faith was weak. His boldness was weak. And the Bible says that he denied Jesus three times times he said i don't know that person i don't know that person the third time he even began to curse the bible says so are you fighting the fight but failing god i want to tell you that all these men that i just read you didn't have the opportunity and the privilege that you and me had peter was about to receive it a couple of days later but me and you have an opportunity that none of these men had do you know what that is we're fighting the good fight and we might fail god but there's one person who fought the good fight, finished the good fight, and never failed God. And his name is Jesus. And he loves you. And he lives inside of you. And the Bible says that he's never going to abandon you. He's never going to leave you. The Bible says that he's going to finish the good work that he started in you. The way Jesus found you is not the way he's going to leave you. He's going to continue to do his good works in you. The way you might be battling right now or struggling right now or you feel like you're never going to overcome the things that you're battling in your life. Those are lies from the devil. You're going to overcome. You're going to win those battles. God's not going to leave you fallen. There's a scripture that says, do not stand outside the door of one of the servants of God waiting for him to fall. Because a righteous man falls seven times, but seven times the Lord raises him back up. You know what that means? God is there when you fall. God is there when you stumble. And he already knows about those things. And he chose you while you were yet a sinner. When you were in the worst state of yourself, when you were the worst version of yourself, he chose you and he called you. And the Bible says, what else won't he do for you? God already knew about all your struggles before he called you. Jesus already knew about all the failures before they even happened. Remember, he knew Peter was going to deny him three times. And he said, I pray that when you return, you strengthen your brothers. God, Jesus, they know about all your failures, about all your shortcomings. Why do you think God sent his son Jesus for me and for you? He is the perfect man that never failed God. He has never failed the Lord. He won all the temptations. He won all the battles, and he lives inside of you. In the book of Revelation, it says that he stands at the door and he knocks, waiting for someone to open. And if they open, he will walk in and have fellowship with them. And he will begin to eat with them, and they will begin to eat with him. You know what that means? He brings the food. And his food makes you strong. His food builds you up. His food gives you strength to overcome. His food gives you victory. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. So you might be feeling weak right now. You might be feeling spiritually malnourished right now. You might be feeling spiritually anemic, weak. But I want to tell you, Jesus is living inside of you. And he's bringing the food, his words of life. And I want to let you know, look at me. Pay attention, please. God will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He sent his son Jesus to this earth for one reason and one reason only, to save sinners. Are you a sinner? Am I a sinner? Hey, then we meet the qualifications. Jesus came especially for you. And Jesus came especially for me to save us, to build us. 
and to take us to the Father and to present us pure and holy. Do you know who's going to present you pure and holy in the presence of God one day? Jesus. And give glory to God for that. So remember, you have a great privilege. You have a great opportunity. His name is Jesus. He's the overcomer. Yes, you're fighting the good fight and you might be failing, but you're not going to stay like that. Keep standing back up. Keep repenting. The Bible says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to wash you. There's forgiveness and there's washing waiting for you. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, subscribe. I post several videos a week aimed like this one to encourage you in faith. If that's something you're interested in, press that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, like always, if you want to show your appreciation for these videos, you can do so by giving a super thanks. It's a button at the bottom of this video. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are a great blessing to my life. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.